bitmap or a raster image is made up of pixels. Whenever you take a picture with your digital camera or look at photographs online, these are all bitmap images. Bitmap images are stored in image files that have various formats, such as JPEG, PNG, and GIF. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to work with bitmap images in Fireworks. You'll learn how to choose a bitmap image format, crop bitmap images, reposition images, use rulers and guides to place and align images, create even spacing between images, use live filters, and use the bitmap tools. Bitmap images, such as photographs, are the most commonly used type of images in website design. They don't scale well, so if you try to enlarge them or shrink them, you'll typically lose some of the quality because they're made up of pixels, and those pixels get resized instead of the image as a whole. With raster images, there's only one layer, meaning that the image is flat. However, they have a smaller file size than vector images, meaning they're quicker to transfer and take up less space on your web server. Take a look at our image. When we start to scale the image, you can see that it becomes pixelated. Here are some of the most popular raster image formats with a brief description of each. These are the image formats you should use on websites you're designing, as well as other projects and fireworks. JPEG is the best format to use for images such as photographs because it has more colors. This is great for smaller images such as images on a page that accompany text. GIF is the best format to use for graphics. It has 256 colors, which is more than enough for most graphics. PNG is a combination of JPEG and GIF. You should use this for larger images on your site, such as headers. When you crop an image, you're essentially cutting away the edges of the image that you don't want or need. Cropping the image can change the focal point and remove unnecessary scenery or objects. It will also reduce the height and width of your image. To crop an image in Fireworks, select the Crop tool from the Select area of the Tools panel. Drag over the bitmap image that you want to crop. Only drag over the parts of the image that you want to keep. Take note of the bounding box. Anything outside of the bounding box will be cropped away. If you need to adjust the bounding box, use the square black handles located on each side and in each corner. Drag in to increase the area that will be cropped away, and drag outward to decrease the amount of the image that will be cropped away. You can also hover your mouse over the inside of the bounding box until you see a four-way arrow. Click and drag to move the bounding box. Press Enter to crop the image. You can then save the image. Import Lesson 3 Asset 2. It's our faux website design created for fireworks. There are already several layers in the design. Cropping an image in one of the layers requires a different process than if you just opened an image in fireworks in order to crop it. To crop an image that's already part of a design, use the pointer tool in the select area of the tools panel to select the image that you want to crop. Go to Edit, Crop Selected Bitmap. You'll then see crop marks around the image. Now you can drag the crop marks until the image is the size you need. Press Enter when you're finished. Whenever you crop an image, you change the dimensions or the size of the image. If you cropped an image that's already part of a design, you may find that you need to reposition the image so it fits within the design. There are several methods that you can use to reposition images. The first method is as simple as using the arrow keys on your keyboard. To do this, use the pointer tool to select the image. Click an arrow key once. This moves the image one pixel. You can hold down the shift key while pressing the arrow key to move the image by 10 pixels. Another method is by using the Align panel. Select Align to Canvas by clicking the button so that the image is aligned to the canvas. Now you can align too, in order from left to right under the Align section of the panel. Align left edge, align horizontal edge, align right edge, align top edge, align vertical center, and align bottom edge. If you've used any web design or photo editing program before, then you're already familiar with how rulers and guides are used to position objects. Rulers and guides give you an easy way to place objects on your page and align different objects to achieve the look that you want. To view the rulers in Fireworks, go to View Rulers. You can see the rulers along the top and left side of the work area. To position an image using the ruler, move your cursor to a location on the ruler. Click and drag toward the canvas. You'll see a light blue line appear. This is a guide. You should also see a tooltip appear. If you don't see a tooltip, go to View Tooltips. The tooltip shows you the X or Y coordinate of the guide. Release the mouse to place the guide. You can now use the guide to position and align objects. 
In addition to using guides to align objects and images, Fireworks also offers tools to help you create even spacing between images. This is especially helpful if you're creating a photo gallery. To do this, click on the pointer tool in the Select area of the Tools panel. Click and drag the mouse pointer over the images. These should be the images for which you want to create even space between. Notice that all three images are now selected. Go to the Align panel. Click the button to select Relative to Object. Go to the Space field and set a value for the spacing. This is the space between objects measured in pixels. You can also choose evenly, as I've done. Click an icon to space evenly vertically or space evenly horizontally. We're going to choose to space evenly horizontally. Fireworks CS6 gives you tools to transform objects by scaling, skewing, or distorting them. Import Lesson 3 Asset 1 again. Let's say we want to resize it. We have a few choices that we can make. We can select the image with the pointer tool in the Tools panel and then right-click on the image. From the Context menu, we can choose Transform, Numeric Transform. We want to scale the object to resize it. Now we can enter new dimensions for the height and width. As long as Constrained Proportions is checked, if we adjust the height, the width will be adjusted automatically to stay proportionate to the height. To resize an image, we can also right-click on the image and select Transform, Scale, or click on the Scale tool in the Select area of the Tools panel. To scale an item like this, simply drag on one of the handles. The handles look like black rectangles. Drag inward to reduce the size and drag outward to increase the size. To rotate an image, mouse over an area of the canvas just above one of the corners of the image. You'll see a curved arrow. Click and hold down the mouse button when you see the arrow, then rotate the image to the left or the right. You can also select and right-click on the image and go to Transform to choose how you want to rotate the image. To skew or distort an image, go to the Tools panel. These tools are grouped with the Scale tool. Select the Distort tool. Now drag one of the corners in to distort it. As you can see, when you distort an image, you change the perspective. When you stack images or shapes, you can create new images and shapes, or you can organize the images and shapes currently on the page. Here we have three shapes. We're going to tell Fireworks which shape appears on top, which one appears in the middle, and which one appears on the bottom. In other words, we're going to rearrange the shapes. To do this, we're first going to use the pointer tool to select the red rectangle. You can see a blue border around a shape or object when it's selected. Next, we're going to right-click on the red rectangle and then go to Arrange, Send Backward. We're choosing this because we want the red rectangle to be behind the green ellipse. Now select and right-click on the blue polygon. Go to Arrange, Send to Front. This sends the blue polygon to the front of all of the shapes. You can bring objects or shapes forward or in front of the object or shape currently on top of it, backward or behind the object or shape currently behind it, to the front or in front of all other objects or shapes, and to the back or behind all other objects or shapes. There's little doubt that you're going to have some images that you use in fireworks for which you'll want to adjust the color or saturation. Although you could do this in another Adobe program, such as Photoshop, it's usually quicker and easier to do it in fireworks using live filters. Live filters are simply non-destructive effects that you can apply to images or objects to adjust aspects such as color or saturation. Using the Levels Live filter, you can adjust the saturation and contrast in an image. To do this, select the image and then go to the Properties panel. Click the Filters button. Go to Adjust Color Levels. You'll then see the Levels dialog box. The graph or histogram in the dialog box shows the distribution of tones in the image. You can adjust the shadows, midtones, and highlights. You can use the slider below the histogram to adjust these. Shadows are on the left, midtones are in the middle, and highlights are on the right. Adjust the levels as you wish and then click OK. Take a look at the Properties panel once again. Notice the eye icon. This will reopen the Filters dialog box if you need to readjust the levels again. The Unsharp Mask filter allows you to sharpen images that may have been softened by resizing. To use the Unsharp Mask filter, select the image you want to sharpen. Go to the Properties panel and click the Filters button. Go to Sharpen, Unsharp Mask. You'll then see the Unsharp Mask dialog box. Enter a value for the amount of sharpness you want to add, then the pixel radius and the threshold. Take time to play with these values to learn how each value affects your image. Click OK to apply the filter. 
The bitmap tools are located in the bitmap area of the tools panel. These tools give you a way to manipulate and edit your bitmap images in Fireworks. In no way, shape, or form does Fireworks give you the photo editing capabilities that a program like Photoshop will give you, but it gives you the basic tools that you might need to get the job done. These tools include the Marquee Tool, Lasso Tool, Polygon Lasso Tool, Magic Wand Tool, Brush Tool, Pencil Tool, Eraser Tool, Blur Tool, Sharpen Tool, Dodge Tool, Burn Tool, Smudge Tool, Rubber Stamp Tool, Replace Color Tool, and Red Eye Removal Tool. If you need more editing capabilities than Fireworks offers, however, you should consider using Photoshop in coordination with Fireworks. The Dodge and Burn tools are used to adjust the brightness in images. Both tools are located with the Blur tool. The changes you make to an image using the Dodge and Burn tools are destructive changes. This means the changes you make to the image are permanent. It's a good idea to save a copy of the original image before you begin. The Dodge tool is used to lighten images, or to increase the brightness. To use the tool, select it in the Tools panel by clicking on the Blur tool and selecting the Dodge tool. Now go to the Properties panel. The Dodge tool is similar to a paintbrush. You'll want to set the size of the brush. You'll also want to set the shape, and then set the edge. We've chosen a soft edge brush. Set the range that you want to lighten. In addition, set a value for the exposure. Paint over the sections of the image that you want to lighten by dragging your mouse. You can see that we've painted over the left side. If you want to undo a change that you've made, go to Edit Undo. You can also press Command or Control Z on your keyboard. The Burn tool is used to darken images. It's also located with the Blur tool. Select the Burn tool and then take a look at the Properties panel again. Set your values just as you did with the Dodge tool and then paint over the image. The rubber stamp tool is used to repair areas in an image. It does this by copying pixels from one location in an image and pasting them into another. In our image, we have a spot here we want to remove. We're going to use the rubber stamp tool to do this. Click on the rubber stamp tool and go to the image. Alt click on a PC and Option click on a Mac on the area in the image that you want to copy. Fireworks will copy the pixels from that area and those pixels will be pasted into the area that we want to repair. If you need to, you can go to the Properties panel and adjust the values for the size of the area that the rubber stamp tool will copy. When you Option or Alt click, then release your mouse, you'll see a crosshair appear. The crosshair is the cursor. The circle around it represents the size of your brush. Move to the area where our spot is located that we want to cover up. Click and drag your cursor. When you do so, the pixels are replaced by those in the area that you chose to clone. 